talk about interior mods. Okay, so the first um, two things I had done, I had done by a professional. I did not do them myself um, because for obvious reasons. So I had the head unit replaced. This is the uh, Alpine Halo. You can see it totally takes the place of the stock stereo that was in there. It sticks out a little bit on the side. Um, but the thing is, it fits the space that the old stereo was in, I think, perfectly. That's a 9-inch screen with Apple CarPlay. I can turn the reverse camera on. Hi, people. So I can leave the reverse camera on all the time, um, which is awesome. And I just when I'm done with it, I turn it on. So not just when it's in reverse, but I can leave it on. Um, and also, it will give me the vehicle information. So tire pressure, and then gauges. Um, I have it set up for the coolant temp and some other stuff. I gotta still mess with these. Um, but yeah, so I'm really, this is the Alpine Halo with the uh, Maestro, um, piece that so all my steering wheel controls still work on it um, and it gives me all the gauges and vehicle info that didn't even appear on the instrument panel of the van so I can actually see them now which is nice. So the other thing I did was I had a, a CompuStar alarm put on it. Um, I did not do the remote start. I did not want the remote start to mess with the auto start um, just in case. Uh, so yeah, I had that put on as well. Just sort of gives me peace of mind. Um, I also had the drone piece, which uh, will alert my phone if the alarm goes off. Um, and I can also add um, GPS if I want to. Uh, it's, a, it's a subscription fee for that portion of it to hook up to your phone. Um, but with the dog being in here, if I'm you know somewhere, I, you know, for me, peace of mind, it's worth it. So, uh, so yeah, so stereo, head unit, and alarm, those were the two things I had done by the professionals. So then yesterday, I went and parked in the Lowe's parking lot all day long. It was hot as blazes. And I had like the worst <laughs> DIY day ever. Nothing worked. Nothing was easy. Nothing. It was like, it was insane. I, I was there for like six hours just trying to do a couple little things. So the things I did, the first you will notice is the overhead shelf. This is a very familiar mod on the Travado owners and wannabes Facebook group. It's just a piece of shelving from Lowe's. They cut it for me. Uh, held up on one end by command hooks and then the other end just rests up there and you got to notch it out back there in the corner. The only hard part about that was getting the command hooks to stick. Um, so I did have to go back and get, I was looking for denatured alcohol that doesn't exist at any hardware store. So I just got some Windex wipes basically and cleaned that up and then got the, you know, five pound hooks. Uh, and put them up there and let them, um, and, and it's, it's stayed up for a couple days now, so I'm fairly confident uh, if, it, if it starts to come down or something, I may just have to tap a couple of screws into these guys, which is fine. Um, and then the other thing, and then the closet mod. So this bad boy 
was a hanging closet, right? There was a little, you know, bar that went there that you're supposed to hang your clothes from in, you know, what is the world's skinniest closet. It's not a walk-in for sure. And so everybody put shelves in and that makes sense. And I wanted to put shelves in. I got to tell you, so cutting the shelves was easy. The problem was the rails that they go on in the back didn't come in the length I needed and they can't cut them. So I just had to wing it. And then I was trying to do something different with these brackets because these brackets are really big. I mean, for these shelves are only eight inches wide, right? And so these brackets are huge and you know, they take up space. Um, and that's not cool, but so I tried different things. I tried just doing one bracket in the middle um, cause they're so narrow that I thought that would be fine. Um, but there's nothing behind that back wall to screw into. So then I was going to have to do these big, you know, um, anchor bolts and, uh, and yeah, toggle bolts. And I just mm -mm, can't handle it. So then I went back to the two side rails in the back there. And then I had a heck of a time making sure it's got into the stick framing, which is on the corners. You don't have a lot of room for air. So I hope these actually stay up. I think they will. I mean, they're pretty, you know, it doesn't move a lot. Um, and then because of the little rubber caps, it kind of, you know, it kind of holds them in there. So I'm, I'm feeling confident. So I got three shelves in here, but I tell you what, y'all working in that little tiny space, that's, that's eight and a half inches inside less on the outer opening, but eight and a half inches and like 19 and a half inches deep. I was in there, y'all. I was in here like holding stuff up with my feet trying to get because you can't get like your whole two hands in there right because it's too narrow you can't get your shoulders in there so I could only use the drill in one hand and then I was so then I couldn't get my other hand in there to hold the things up to drill them in and so yeah like I'm like holding stuff up with my feet it was yeah it was kind of a shit show it took forever I did four I think four rounds of returns at um, Lowe's yesterday that's my life. I just parked at Lowe's and uh, yeah, I got poured on in the rain and like all the things. So that got done. Thank God. Never doing that again. If that comes off, then I, yeah, just no more shelves. This is going to go back to being a hanging closet because I just can't. All right. Took the bed down so y'all can see. I put up an anything keeper. Uh, and I put it facing this way so that I would be able to get into it when the bed is up as well as down. So, you know, my cell phone can go in here or whatever um, when I'm sleeping at night and then it just, you know, magnets back up. So once I put the uh, anything keeper in, you know, it is in this cardboard <laughs> that Winnebago puts on the underside of here. So then this whole end started to come down. So I had to throw a couple screws in there. Yeah, live and learn, live and learn, live and learn. But uh, my anything keepers that, I don't know, if it works out well, I might put another one up. I put it down here where I normally keep my feet so I wouldn't be clunking into it, hopefully. So these I had before I bought the van. Um, these are van made shades and they're awesome. Um, there's a guy in California who makes them and uh, the van came with just these cloth squares with magnets in the corner that were supposed to, you know, go over those windows and cover them up for you. But uh, these are nice. These are, again, they still use the magnets, but they're insulated, total blackout, fit in there perfectly. Uh, so I had those made before I even got the van and then I took them with me um, and they have been on there basically since I picked it up from the dealer. So got my van made shades, love them. Um, let's see what else we got. Oh, I bought some leveling blocks and I keep them in here now uh, because I use them as a step to get onto the bed. So I had a three inch memory foam on this bed when I first got it. It was just too thick and heavy to put the bed up. I have found, certainly while I am preparing to go out on the road, that I need to have access to my garage area. 
Oh, if you're wondering why my suitcase is in here, it's because I need to take that suitcase with me on the road and I'm just trying to figure out where it's going to go. I think it's going to go right there. Uh, anyway, so I like keeping the bed up, putting the bed up every day after I get out of it. And that three inch foam was just, it was too heavy, it's too bulky, too hard to move. So I went and got a one and a half inch and I don't even think it's one and a half inch. It's like got waves in it. Anyway, it's kind of crappy. Uh, I might look for a better one, but just from Walmart, I got it. It was cheap. Um, and, and so it makes the bed comfortable enough. It's not as comfortable as the three inch, obviously, but it makes the bed comfortable enough for me and I can still get it up there. Um, the other thing with the bed, how I can't, well, you can see a little bit, is there is now a sheet over the Froley system, right? I put a fitted sheet over the Froley system because to get this bed up, you actually have to sort of lift one corner up and then sh slide it a little bit to get it to do this. Um, and it snags on the Froley system, like your sheets and all the stuff in the mattress snags on those Froley springs. So, um, so I put, and this was suggested from other people, I put um, a sheet over them so now things slide better. And it's a cotton sheet so air can still get in there. Um, so that's what I, I did on there. Um, bathroom. So uh, somebody suggested these from the Amazon. These are like super heavy duty suctioning because these walls are textured. And so regular suctiony things aren't going to do great up there. I mean, my command hook has remained up there, but, uh, you know, these super heavy duty sticky suction cut things are staying great. I don't know if a bar of soap is going to stay in there going down the road, but we're going to find out anyway. So yeah, you can hang little things off the front when they're drying. And anyway, so I got those little bins and then, uh, oh. TMI, obviously, but, um, you know, I think I've mentioned before, I'm not putting paper in my black tank. So cereal container fits there, line with bag, paper goes in there. And then again on the uh, Facebook group, somebody mentioned that they found these little shelves that actually fit in this little medicine cabinet. And I got one, I think two will fit. But I think I'm going to, like, have bigger stuff over here. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, have bigger stuff over there and then the shelf over here for smaller stuff. We'll see. I can always order another one if I decide I need another one. Um, so that's what I have done in the bathroom. Oh, one more thing. Uh, I got these uh, seat covers on... Uh, the bench seat. It's a little dirty because I did some drilling and that's sawdust down there. Uh, what these actually are is I got, <laughs> y'all, seriously, I love that, that Facebook group. This woman was like, hey, pack and play mini, which is, I guess, some sort of crib, portable crib for small humans, I apparently. Anyway, their stuff fits these bench seats perfectly. So I got um, a waterproof pad because this is like the ultra leather and that stuff ain't cheap. So I got the waterproof pad and then a pack of sheets. And I'm going to get another pack of sheets just to have a spare. But they fit perfectly on the bench seat. And then I can take them off and wash them. Uh, and it actually helps. This thing keeps falling down. And it helps the back stay up. Um, I'm going to get my friend Pam to permanently fix that um, next weekend. But, uh, yeah, so we'll pack and play mini seat covers. Because I just, you know, I, I'm trying not to muck up the leather right from the get-go. And this thing, if anybody knows a way to get this off, I would love this to just disappear forever. Um, my guess is it got bolted on here. Um before all the rest of the trim because like there's no there's no bolts through the back into the closet so I'm guessing what probably has to happen to get it off is you just got to get in there with one of those little flat saws and just shear the bolts off of it or the clips or whatever's holding it on there 
because it's just this stupid headrest thing um, that I guess they put in here to help hold this back cushion up, but really, can you just not just don't put this in and make this cushion higher and attach it to the damn wall, Winnebago? No, I guess not. Anyway, so I want this off of here eventually, but that's going to be a project for another day. So once again, thank you and welcome to all my new subscribers. Uh, there's a couple folks out there that have been kind enough to give me shout outs uh, and so have sent you my way. Uh, again, I just hope to be worthy. So I just wanted to follow up with some of the comments uh, that you guys have posted. Uh, Roads of Life asked me to put some links to the products I showed on uh, the uh, how much stuff do you need video? So I did that, I didn't put everything. I feel like y'all can figure out what a hose is. Uh, but I did try to put uh, links to, to some of the stuff. I hope you find that helpful. Uh, Greg Yeager says that he is one of my early subscribers and I thank you very much. Uh, I feel like it's insane that I'm almost up to 200. So, you know, people that were here at the very beginning, uh, again, thank you. <laughs> Uh, Maria Teresa Lopez, girl, do the Sumo Springs yourself. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Uh, let me know how it goes. Don't let the van fall on you. That's the only, that's the only bit that's remotely scary about this. Uh, Scott Tideman, uh, getting on the road this fall. Awesome. Congratulations. Um, it's so exciting and so much work. I'm smack dab in the middle of it and it's nuts. Uh, and he sent Whiskey some hugs and me an adult beverage uh, virtually. And we both very much appreciate that. Um, Marcus J214. Yeah. Hey, fellow first responder. Uh, and thank you so much uh, for the kind words. Um, unfortunately, when I leave where I am now, I will not be doing my EMT thing anymore. Uh, because you, as you know, you have to be associated with the squad and you're state certified and I won't be in the state anymore. So unfortunately I won't be doing that, but I still have my skills and I still have a jump bag. So if I run across somebody that needs some assistance, uh, I'm happy to provide that. And finally to Joe Raymond, uh, you commented on my debadging video that you wanted to see, uh, the final result. So I went ahead and just filmed a little footage of the exterior. Uh, hopefully that will give you a good idea of what she looks like with every badge and every sticker removed. So uh, thanks again for your comments and um, keep them coming. All right. So there was a big W right there. I think there was one over here. I can't remember. So, then there were badges down the side, on the back, and then there was one up there above the bike rack. There was some down here. So, the tank fill and city fill stickers are still on there. There were many a sticker down here near the propane and perhaps I'm crazy I just think maybe propane people will know how to do it right I don't know or they're gonna blow me up whatever so yeah so you wanted to see how she looked debadged well there she be she be all debadged de-stickered de-everything Okay, so now for a giveaway of sorts. Uh, I have these, what I think are fabulous Ginger Walkabout stickers. Got my little logo on there and everything. Uh, and I will send one of these completely free of charge. I'll even pay for the po postage and all the things uh, to the first 20 people who send me their address. I promise I'm not going to show up on your doorstep. I ain't got time for that anyway. But if you want to send me a P.O. box, you want to send me, you know, your work address, 
whatever, that's fine. Uh, first 20 people, send me your address to ginger at thegingerwalkabout.com. I'll also put it down below in the description and I will send one of these to you completely free of charge. Um, but you gotta do it quick cause I got like a week before I'm on the road. So I gotta crank these out uh, and get them to you or God knows, you'll probably never get them. So anyway, 20 people, ginger at thegingerwalkabout.com. Send me an address, send you one of these.